I call Materia to write. Thank you very much, Mr Speaker. Um, this bill uh, will not be supported by the Green Party. It's inconsistent with the Bill of Rights. Well, the Minister of Corrections will giggle, um, but she won't listen to what are serious issues about this legislation. Now, this bill is the number of areas where we have problems with this bill, and I'll just briefly go through them. The bill is inconsistent with the Bill of Rights. It shifts, we do not agree, with the shifting of the onus of proof onto the accused when it comes to uh, questions of supply. Essentially, this bill is fiddling around the edges of what needs to be a rational and evidence-based consideration of how we manage drug law, what kind of drugs we control and what kinds of ways, uh, based on the harms that those drugs cause to individuals and communities and proper scientific evidence. We've had the Law Commission produce its draft report. Its report. Um, we've had the government refuse to address any parts of that report at this stage. So the government is clearly not taking a rational, evidence-based approach to drug law. And instead, they fiddle around the edges with legislation like this that will not help and, f and in fact, will exacerbate the harms that are caused by an irrational and emotive, politically motivated, I have to say, um, drug law regime. Now, it's, it's been good listening to the other... Um, members tonight talking about the issues around where pseudoephedrine is sourced, because predominant parts of this bill is about the control of pseudoephedrine. We know that only a small amount of the drug is, uh, that's used in the manufacture of methamphetamine is sourced from pharmacies. So this legislation, which controls its access through pharmacies, is only dealing with a very tiny fraction of the source of the drug. But beg the question, why would you not spend this time on the, the dominant sources of where this drug is, is found? And the fact is that most of it's imported. Um, we know that recent free trade agreements with China um, have provided for looser importation rules. And there was significant um, news reporting around the impacts of the free trade agreements um, and their impact on the importation of the um, source drugs for methamphetamine that those free trade agreements allow for uh, less um, consideration, less investigation of imports from China, and yet the, the percentage of uh, the source drugs for methamphetamine comes significantly from um, Chinese imports. And so where is the enforcement there? Where is the effort to put legislation in place to deal with the dominant, the dominant source of these drugs? It's nowhere. The government doesn't want to deal with um, the issues around the free trade agreements. They want to maintain those economic opportunities. Therefore, they'll spend um, valuable time regulating the very tiny fraction that comes out of pharmacies and not deal with the problem. As a legis we ca simply cannot continue with drug law reform that, d that refuses, fails to deal with the actual problems that this country faces. And the fight against methamphetamine, we do need to take comprehensive action. And that comprehensive action... Um, means looking at both supply and demand. Um, limiting the uh, pseudoephedrine through this bill is really a very soft option. Uh, we need to move law enforcement uh, for the supply of this drug away from, because there's only so many resources to do this, away from obviously less dangerous drugs to the more dangerous drugs and their supply. That's it's a no-brainer. If you've got few resources, you need to focus those resources on what is the most dangerous drug in order to manage the supply of that drug. Um, and I just want to refer to an incident um, uh, concerning cannabis. Just a week or so ago, there was a news report from, um, uh, that reported Detective Inspector Harry Quinn, who retired a couple of years ago after 37 years in the police. 37 years he spent in the police who had called on senior police to lead a debate on the cannabis issue. This was an officer who helped to set up the National Organised Crime Unit. He was involved in um, untold cannabis eradication operations, and he took flack from the police um, for writing a report recommending a relaxation of cannabis enforcement so that um, you, know, you could issue... Uh, warnings to adult users, but that police resources, scarce, precious police resources, were not being used um, to enforce cannabis use and supply when so many other drug issues were pressing on the police resources. So why would you, have, why would you not have rational drug law that focuses on what is absolutely needed and take into account 
the experience of a, of a police and of a detective inspector who has spent 37 years working at the coalface, who himself agrees that shifting drug enforcement resources where they are needed is what needs to happen if we're to deal seriously with the harms of drugs. Now, uh, I have to say that um, uh, Detective Inspector Harry Quinn and his view around how to manage, how to poke resources at the most, um, most significant drugs and moving resources away from drugs that aren't causing so much harm, that model was suggested by the Law Commission. So not only was it supported by the police on the ground, but by um, the Law Commission in their review, but the government has put its head in the sand as refusing to even consider it. So these rational options are being refused, the government is refusing to consider. If we want to look at reducing demand and reducing the harm that's caused by drug use to individuals and their families and their communities, then we mustn't exacerbate the harms. We should not be criminalising users of these drugs. These people need help. We know, we know from all the research that gets done that users of illegal drugs will not seek help because they fear the effect of the law. It is the single biggest barrier to people seeking help when they need it. So why, why would we have drug law and, and silly fiddlings around the edges like this bill when we know that if we could remove that barrier from people and from their families, then we would be able to access and we would be able to contact those people, get access to them, get them into the support and the help that they need, provide them with the health services and the drug and alcohol rehabilitation. Their families aren't going to dob them in either. So even family members who can see the harm being done from the use of the drug are not going to contact um, government agencies because they fear too the impact of the law on that person. So why would, why would any dra rational drug law put up such an unnecessary, unjust, harmful barrier to people who need help. And until our drug laws in this country are, are looked at from the point of view of harm minimisation, of focusing on what are genuinely dangerous drugs and their regulation and control, none of this stuff is going to make any difference. It's not, there's no such thing. You can talk about rhetoric around war on drugs, it's just rubbish. What legislation like this and what the current drug law regime simply does is it provides a huge black market for a bunch of people to make a heap of money. Meanwhile, people, families on the ground are suffering and nothing changes for them. This law will do nothing for those families who are desperately in need of help. Now, in terms of so if pseudoephedrine, um, one of one 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 of, the areas of, one of the areas where you need to take advice from are a variety of experts. We've, I've talked about the Law Commission, I've talked about the police, I've talked about the pharmacies. Now, the pharmacies from where um, pseudoephedrine comes from particularly, they are really, very really strict about the sale of pseudoephedrine. The Pharmaceutical Society is against the move in this legislation. Um, to um, further restrict it because, in their view, they're very worried that they would end up dispensing much, uh, much more potent pseudoephedrine that would likely increase the attacks on their pharmacies. So this legislation is going to further put pharmacies at risk. Where is the harm minimisation approach to that? We, the, the other parts of the bill, the restriction on utensils, honestly, it's always been ridiculous. One of the things that we know around the, the use of utensils for the consumption of drugs is that often those utensils help to reduce the harm caused by the consumption of that drug. Um, and so further restricting utensils like this, it, it's a feel-good measure. It makes government feel like they're doing something. Actually, it does harm. So this legislation is simply going to do more harm, more harm to pharmacies, more harm to business, more harm to the users of drugs. Do nothing. Won't regulate supply of the component drugs of pseudoephedrine because it's not focused at where the drugs mostly come from, so it does nothing. It's a complete waste of time. And in the meantime, while we're sitting here wasting time on legislation that will do nothing for these families, families are hurting every day. Children are hurting every day. If we want to, if we want to invest in our families, we need to have serious drug and rehabilitation available to everyone who needs it. We need it for every prisoner every single prisoner who has a drug or alcohol problem. We need to regulate the two most dangerous drugs in this country that should be under the MDA, alcohol and tobacco, that kills thousands and thousands of New Zealanders every year. 
Now, the National Party are complaining about this, but the fact is that the two legal drugs that are the most dangerous and kill the most New Zealanders in this country are not regulated um, under the Misuse of Drugs Act. In fact, they're treated as a food. So, sir, rational, evidence-based drug law that 